morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of UK Creative Festival 2024. I hope that you're all ready for an incredible day of talks and workshops that will inspire you to start thinking about what your future career could look like. So as mentioned, uh, I'm Phoebe from the Eric app, a creative career platform and the official tech partner of this year's festival. But a bit more about Eric later. So it doesn't actually feel like too long ago that I was in your shoes um, at uni, upskilling and attending events just like this. So I'm here to talk to you today about what the creative industries is and actually dispel some myths. But first, let me paint a bit of a picture about my journey into the creative industries. I think I can say that my career path has been full of lots of ups and downs, lots of surprises, but I think it all started in 2018. So it was A-level results day. I picked up my um, results and immediately my heart sank. I just hadn't got the grades to get into my first or second choice university. So I actually wanted to study law at uni. Um, so took English Lit, English Language, History and Politics. Um, but because of my results, I remember thinking, oh, am I actually like ready for this career in law that I kind of psyched myself up for? But all was not lost. Um, I went through clearing, and my grades were good enough to get into a few universities. So I thought even though this hiccup might have been my chance to kind of study something a bit more creative, I've always been a kind of person that doesn't do things half assed So I thought, let me continue with my um, dream to be um, a barrister. Um, and as you can see, I um, actually went to uni, studied law, um, studied super hard, and then graduated and managed to land a job as a legal assistant uh, just starting a few months after I graduated. But, and now this was such a huge but, I had a thought in the back of my mind and thinking, what will happen to creative Phoebe if I then become a barrister? All throughout uni, i have been picking up creative freelance projects. So things like content creation, um, editorial styling, writing, and things like that. But with my tunnel vision on my legal career, I'd almost forgotten that I could actually have a creative career and make that a reality. Um, and then I remembered a conversation that I had with my personal tutor. She said something a bit like, uh, when thinking about your future career, think about what you actually like to do in your spare time. It's the stuff that you make extra time for that you're truly passionate about. And this is a great place for actually thinking about what you want to do in the future. And now this was a light bulb moment. Um, I obviously didn't then just think I'm going to quit my legal job and like pack up my things and walk out of the office and like slow mo like a movie. Um, instead, I decided to plan and plan and plan, and then I put my ideas into motion. So I continued with all the freelance projects that I was doing on the side, building my creative network, building soft skills as well, like organisation and communication and confidence. And then I started applying for some creative jobs. So, of course, I faced plenty of rejections as well. Um, but then, when all I thought was lost, uh, I actually then managed to land a job at Eric. Um, and I think that it hasn't really been easy getting here. Um, and it's been filled with lots of ups and downs. But I think just remember, take a deep breath. You've got this. And the fact that you are all here today means that you're already starting from a great position. So as I mentioned before, um, I'm Phoebe, um, and I now work at a company called Eric as the head of content and opportunities. So Eric is a completely free to use um, career app for young people and schools, but I'll talk a bit more about the app later. So I've actually learned so much about the creative industries since working at Eric, but there are just a few things that I wish that I'd known and I wish that someone had told me before I kind of started my creative career. So you've probably been told a few out-of-date myths um, about the creative industries, and most people are still under the assumption that it's such a small space with no jobs um, and just no security. But I'm actually going to tell you a few of the facts and dispel those myths for you today, because I just wish that someone had done that for me when I was younger. So the first myth is that the creative industries in the UK is small. So most people think that the creative industries only consists of like a handful of singers or artists or actors, um, and that's just the extent of the creative world. But that is in fact just the tip of the iceberg. So how many creative industries do people think that there are? Anyone going to shout out some answers? A number? Eight? Fourteen? Forty? Anyone else? 
Okay, well, there are actually 16 different creative industries. Um, and yet it does include things like the traditional things like maybe music, um, art, fashion, um, but it also includes newer industries like advertising or games or design or media. Um, and these are all unquestionably large industries. And you can also see behind me a bit how different subsectors of the creative industries are grouped and like mingle and connect together. So these are all really interesting and useful to understand as like things like film or like the screen um, sector, all of the industries within like those sectors like intermingle and they share skills and they work on projects together like films or TV programs. And at the bottom, you can see underpinning it all is Createc. So this is a relatively new term that refers to the combination of creativity and technology. Um, and every industry actually has a huge tech side to it. Um, and it's just everywhere. You probably interact with Createc without even knowing it. So for example, those like 20 second YouTube ads that you always try to click through and skip, or even the sponsored like TikTok shop videos that you see on that platform, um, they are a huge part of Createc. And of course, the creative industries is growing at such an incredible speed. So some of the creative industries have actually grown twice the size in the last 10 years. And that just means that there are just plenty of jobs available. The second myth is that there is no money in the creative industries. Well, it actually generates about £120 billion to the UK economy every year. And that's billion with a B. So like it says here, that is actually more than life sciences, automotive, aerospace, and oil and gas combined. And that's wow, just because no one would ever actually question how rich a single one of those industries are, but the creative industries makes more than all four of them combined. And of course, that, that money doesn't just come from within the UK. Um, we've actually managed to establish ourselves as a creative global powerhouse known all over the world for the strength of our creative industries. And it just means that we are attracting huge amounts of overseas investment that's fueling even more growth in the future. I know I mentioned a bit about what Createc is, but haven't actually said how much money it makes. So businesses and investors are pulling insane amounts of money into Createc at the moment, as it's seen as such an exciting area of growth. And it's actually the second fastest growing area of tech after climate tech. And of course, when a sector makes more money, it means that people start becoming a bit better paid. So you can make lots of money in the creative industries. And here are just a few examples of some of the average salaries um, in the creative industries. So if you have an adult saying that there's no money or no future in the creative industries, then you can just whip out a picture of this slide and show it to them and they, you can see that they just don't have a clue. And then myth number three is that there are no jobs in the creative industries. So of course, it's such a huge sector for, for employment. So nearly one in 11 jobs in the UK are actually classified as creative roles. And if you add that up, like that is a lot of people. In fact, a whopping 2.4 million creative sector jobs were filled in 2023, which is a 15, like about 15% 15 increase since 2019. And of course, despite a few knockbacks that we face, like the pandemic, um, strikes, um, funding cuts and things like that, it looks like the UK creative industries is back on track um, to continue its astronomical job growth. And there are, of course, a further one million people doing creative jobs in non-creative industries. So that's 3.4 million people in total. So just for a bit of a comparison, um, that's nearly one million more people working in the creative industries than in STEM. I think there's about 2.2 million people working in STEM. And there are, of course, thousands of companies that you can work for. So a couple of years ago um, at Eric, we asked a few young people how many um, employers that they could list um, in each of the creative industries. And we tried the film industry first. And on average, um, young people could only name about four um, employers. So Universal, Pixar, Disney, um, Netflix. And of course, they are all household names, um, but in fact, they are just a fraction of the amount of companies that you could potentially work for. Um, the actual number of potential film employers in the UK is literally thousands. 
And myth number four is that I have to be a true creative to work in the creative industries. So I wouldn't say that I'm technically a true creative. Um, and my journey into the industry has, has been anything but, I guess, the norm. But here I am. Um, and it's not just um, artists, singers, and actors. Let's think about it. If there are about 2.4 million people working in the creative industries, they can't all be doing just those three jobs. And the nature of the creative industries is that there are, of course, some more like front of stage jobs that you see, like singers or actors or musicians. Um, but that doesn't mean that the more behind the scenes roles don't exist. So the Barbie movie is such an incredible example of the huge number of backstage roles um, that we definitely need to celebrate a lot more. So there were 130 people working in the set design team, um, which was a team that actually used up so much pink paint that they caused a global shortage. Shortage. Um, there were 74 people working in the costume department, and that wasn't just about finding like cute pink clothes to wear. Um, they, of course, had to go through decades of Barbie history and painstakingly recreate all of those costumes from across history. Um, there were 75 stunt people, so that's lots of body doubles, plenty of choreographed dancers, um, and even a couple of jumps required. And there were 155 people in the VFX team, um, including a company called Framestore, who actually are one of the partners um, on the Eric app. And of course, an unknown amount of people in the marketing team. I mean, need I say more? The marketing for that film was just off the charts good, with over 100 official product partnerships and one of the best movie social media campaigns ever. I mean, I think that the marketing team made the world Barbie mad. But of course, apart from the creative jobs in the creative industries, you should also think about the one million um, creative jobs in the corporate world. So here are just a few examples of the kinds of creative jobs that you could do um, in non-creative industries. So if you wanted to be like, I don't know, um, a designer, you could um, be a designer um, at a law firm, for example, or for the government, or at a restaurant. You don't just have to limit yourself to being a designer at a design agency, as there are always creative jobs available. And there are, of course, lots of people doing corporate jobs in the creative world. So you could be an administrator um, for an architecture firm, or work in HR for an art gallery, or be a developer for a fashion brand. It's totally possible to overlap between the two worlds. And you don't just have to have one passion either. You can go into an area that, combi that combines a couple of your interests. So you could work in PR for a film company, or be a music composer at a games development startup, or even carve out a niche as a videographer for local museums and galleries. Just make sure that you're not limiting yourself by thinking in too linear of a mindset, as your options are so much wider than you think. But of course, the question is, why have we been told these myths? I think it's because the creative industries has grown so phenomenally that it hasn't done quite a good job of keeping everyone up to date with these developments. And the creative industries that the adults around you, like your parents or school teachers experienced, is definitely not what you are, you are currently experiencing. But that is what we at Eric are on a mission to do, is to bring more awareness to the creative industries, starting by spreading the word about what the creative industries actually looks like and the world of cre creative career opportunities out there for you. So let's just go back to the beginning and remind ourselves of the different creative industries again. So how many of you would love an internship in one of these industries? Put your hands up. Anybody? Yeah? How many of you are thinking about going to your first networking event? Well, you are already here today, so I hope that some of you will go to the networking area later. Um, and how many of you are looking to, experience, to gain experience in one of these industries as well? Add things to your CV, your portfolio. Yes, amazing. Well, the Eric app has everything that you are looking for and more. We connect you to resources, opportunities, events, training schemes, all of those kinds of things so that you can just focus on actually applying for things instead of spending hours scrolling the internet or just waiting until something falls into your lap. So you can sign up to the app for free today um, by scanning this QR code um, to access the amazing opportunities that we refresh daily on the app. 
And any time I talk about Eric, I always just think about how much easier my career journey would have been if I had the app. So as I mentioned that my journey into the creative industries has been a little unconventional, and I did feel a bit lost at times as well. So having all of the amazing creative opportunities all in one place just would have made things so much easier and sped up my career journey as well. So if there's just one thing that I would like you all to remember um, is that no matter what anyone tells you about having to figure out your career like now, um, it's okay to, know, to not know what you want to do. Just keep putting yourself out there like today. I think this is such a great start. So sign up for that networking event, even if it's a bit out of your comfort zone. Apply for that internship, even if you don't know that you've got all of the right skills for, but you're super passionate about the brand. Let's send that email to that ad agency and see if you could just spend a day shadowing a member of the team. Just keep remembering to put yourself out there. And the industry is full of so many exciting opportunities. And just think about all of the industries or job roles that you didn't even know existed until today. But as I mentioned at the start, um, Eric has, of course, teamed up with UK Creative Festival as their official tech partner, which just means that everything that is happening um, at the festival today um, is on the app, so you can keep up to date with what's going on where. Um, and also, there's some opportunities from the range of different agencies and companies here. They've also promoted some very, very cool opportunities on the app. So I think there's a careers fair happening in the roller disco area, which is just outside of this, this space. Um, I think that Marlow Theatre and Turner Contemporary are doing a panel um, in the Dodgems area later. I think Depop are here, Red Magazine, um, Positive Retail are also here if you're into sustainable fashion. It's gonna be t film and TV panels, um, performing arts panels, um, just lots of amazing stuff happening today. So make sure that you, you know, attend as much stuff as you possibly can. And also Eric are also in the careers fair area. Um, if you wanna pop over and say hi, we've got some goodies and some tote bags as well. We'd love to see some of your faces. Um, but here is just to an incredible festival and I hope that you're all ready for an insightful day. So, yeah, enjoy. Thank you.